Okay, here we have the barrels for the T160 back uh, from the second engineers. I sent it to Dave Smith over in Lancashire for a second opinion on what best to do uh, with the bores because <clears throat> the engine brand new, you know, reconditioned but was smoking badly. You can still see the sort of remains of the oil on the top of the pistons. I mean, we only did about 30 miles, I think. Uh, it was smoking terribly. So sent them, sent them over to uh, Dave Smith and, and he went to his engineers and they, together, they agreed that the best thing they thought to do would be to rehone, that we would rehone the bores, that there was there was uh, enough clearance, uh, enough meat left in the bores to rehone them. Because, of course, every time you rehone them, you lose about a thousandth of an inch. Um, but I think these pistons will take up to about five thou gap. And so I think we're on about three, three and a half now uh, with that rehome. Because I wasn't sure, some people thought that the uh, original rings would have sacrificed themselves and, and sort of like taken all the rough edges off the bores. And so just by putting new rings in, it would be sufficient uh, to stop the engine smoking. Um, but of course, I didn't want to risk that, so I sent them over to Dave Smith, and indeed they said well, it's probably best to rehome them completely. So that's what we did. So they've now been re rehomed, so they were honed by my local engineers, who I'm not going to use again, and now they've been done by Dave Smith's. Uh, I have a vague recollection now that my T160 smoked years ago, eight years ago when I rebuilt it or thereabouts, and that was done by my local engineers as well. So maybe, I don't know. So we've got the new uh, rings on. I've just put them on. They're Amiga rings. And I've discovered that apparently there's two lots of rings you can buy, Amiga or Gertz, to fit um, a, a, a triple. But now apparently Gertz have stopped making them. So you can now only get Amiga rings. This is what I've been told. Uh, there may be a few old stock Gertz rings about, I don't know. But apparently in terms of remanufacture, you can now only get Amiga rings. So they come, they come with clear instructions for which way up they go. Top plane, any way round. Second with a step facing downwards and the oil, the third ring with the bevel facing the top of the piston. So, you know, it, it's pretty straightforward, you know, very clear as to which way they go. Uh, so I've put those rings on and uh, I've, we've got a new top end gasket set, the, um, gasket set and I bought some new... Uh, X-ring, O-ring seals. The others were quite new, but obviously they've crushed and one thing and another. So rather than risk an oil leak, you know, for the sake of a couple of quid, I bought a new set because I certainly don't want to be taking this all apart again. So uh, so there we have the engines now ready uh, to to be reassembled, all the, all the top end bits. So first thing I'm going to do will be to put the pistons back on the conrods and then we'll put a new base gasket on and then we'll get the barrels uh the newly rehomed barrels back on over the pistons okay so uh that'll be my first job i'll put the pistons on then we'll put a new base gasket on and then i'll put the barrels uh slide the barrels down over the over the uh, uh pistons and we'll be using uh, the proper, I don't know if I've got them to hand. There we go. And these are the proper uh, piston and clamps, which make, you know, it's so hard to do them without these clamps. So that's one ring clamp. And you can see why it's got one, two, three, I've got like four, four joints in it. The problem is, with the piston ring clamps on a trident, it's not getting them on, it's getting them off. Because, you know, you've got the lip on the barrel that goes down over the piston. And that then sinks into the crankcase. So the piston ring dis the piston ring clamp disappears into the crankcase, you know, as you put the barrels down. And then you've got to get them off. And, and it's, with the standard piston rings, it's very, it clamps, it's very, very difficult. So these are, these are actually copies of the ones originally made by Triumph BSA factory ones because then they, they're clipped they're not there's no screw at the top they're clipped and you clip them on and then you can just reach down and unclip them and because of the way they're jointed you can then sort of like pull them out of the crankcase um, 
I, I lent these to a friend recently. He was doing it for the first time, I think. And I said, yeah, you want to use these? And he said, how on earth does anyone ever do it without these clamps? He said, using these clamps was a total struggle. He said, I can't believe anyone's ever done them with a normal clamp because, you know, that, that's the problem. Like on a twin, you can have both the pistons sitting at the top because they're both side by side. The barrels go down. Then you take the clamps off and then you slide the barrels all the way down. But a triple, you know, the, the, they don't come up very far in the first place because there's three. You put the first one on. Then the next two are down there. You can't move the first one, middle one down too far because they pop out the rings. So then the barrels go down and down, and then you can't get the, the piston ring clamp out. Anyway, um, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to put the pistons on, and um, and then we'll slide them, and then we'll get the barrels on. Well, I've got to put the tappets back in, of course. <laughs> Mustn't forget to do that first, put the tappets back on. Okay, uh, the pistons are on. So, uh, so what I did was I, um, I just gently heated the pistons, just not too much, just to make sure that the gudgeon pins would slide nicely in. Then I put in the uh, circlip, the, pigeon, the gudgeon pin circlip on the sort of inside of each piston so that then um, I can... Uh, so then like from from this side, I'll do it from the other side. So I put this... Uh, I put this this uh, clip in so that then I could then slide the gudgeon pin in from this side and uh, then put the clip in. I've treble checked that the clips are actually fully seated in their grooves on each uh, on each gudgeon pin, and I um, and then made sure the circlips were all fully in. Um, uh, doubly made sure I got the pistons the right way around. That always helps. Um, on a Trident, you've got a slightly bigger cutaway on the inlet than you have on the exhaust because obviously the valves are bigger and the inlet valves are bigger. So the bigger um, cutaway goes to the back of the engine for the inlet valve. So that, that always helps to go around the right way. Um, and then I've just put a bit of tissue paper in just to protect the pistons. Um, and oh yeah i put a little bit of oil on each uh, gudgeon pin obviously the engine's got you know it's got oil in now it's not a brand new engine because we've been run, running it but also i just put a little bit of oil on the gudgeon pins uh, before i put them in just to uh you know make sure everything's okay when we start the engine so what i'm going to do now is i'm now going to prep the barrels for putting on so i'll put a new base gasket on i'll get the tappets out and we'll fit them to the block and we'll fit the the um, X-ring oil seals to the bottom of the pushrod tubes. Anyway, pistons on, so uh, that's good. What I will do before we put them on, I'll be turning the uh, piston ring so the gaps are about 60, uh, is that right, uh, 60 degrees apart, whatever it is, 120, 120 degrees apart. So um, that's the sort of general way to set them about 120 degrees apart and preferably not in line the whole the gap not in line either front or back okie doke uh, here we are we've uh, we're ready to try and put the barrels on so i've got the two outside pistons uh, high and i've got my little bits of wood underneath the pistons to which helps like hold them vertical uh, and also when i put the barrels down it stops them stops the engine turning around and the you know the pistons disappearing into the crankcase um, and then when we're halfway round, I'll, I'll carefully turn the engine over so the centre piston comes up uh, without losing you know, the rings um, out of the barrels and the two outer ones. So we've got our clip, um, our clip ring compressors on, uh, and got a new gasket, and uh, okay, and we're fitting the pistons dry, no oil in the bores. Now, when the bike smoked so badly uh, after the first time we re rebuilt it, I checked with everybody. I said, "Well, I've, I've, I've fixed, I, I fitted them dry, you know." The, and everyone, everyone that I've spoken to has said, "Yeah, dry. Fit the barrel, fit, fit the pistons dry in the barrels." So you know, I'm happy about that. I was thinking, "No, it's something I've done that I've done, you know, that's caused the smoking." I don't think it is. 
So they'll be fitted dry. We've got the tappets in and they're held up by the um, um, cable ties. And the tappets have gone back in the same positions they were in when they came out. Uh, we've got the new X-ring seals fitted uh, to the bottoms. They're just easy to do now while the barrels are out. I haven't put the... Um, um, the pillar bolts uh, in yet. Yeah, I'll, I'll put them in when we uh, after the the bows are on. Uh, I've got a bit of well seal, just a little bit of well seal on the bottom of the barrels, which is going to mate up uh, with this uh, with this gasket. A lot of people don't use well seal on the base gasket, but but I just put a smear on. Um, oh, and then of course the other thing, the last thing is uh, to make sure that we put the barrels on the right, right way round. <laughs> it, it would actually be quite easy to accidentally put them on the wrong way round. Uh, you'd know soon enough because they wouldn't fit fully because the tap is two on one side, one on the other. But, you know, it's a pain because I have to take them all off again and fit them, turn them round. So the square, the squarish end is at the front and then the curved air uh, goes to the back. Uh, I think that's about everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift the barrels up and I'm going to try and slide them down onto these two pistons and uh, slowly knock them down and then take the clips off and then we'll concentrate on the centre center piston, which is always the hard one. Yeah, I think I've mentioned everything. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not video videoing it because I have already videoed all this sequence before when we were rebuilding the engine for the first time. So I'm just really just sort of reminding everyone what I'm doing rather than I'm not showing it. You know, obviously, I'm telling you what I'm doing rather than showing you what I'm doing. But uh, if you want to see it in action, there is the uh, there is the original video. Okay, here we go.